is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hi, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zinker, and I'm your host. And I'm always looking for people to challenge you and help you to get to the next level of where it is, ever it is that you want to go. And today we're going to talk about the next level of your purpose and how you really find your why, or at least talk about different elements of your why. So Frankie Russo is here with us today. Through his Russo Capital firm, he's developed a portfolio of companies across multiple industries, including technology, advertising, marketing, automotive, music, agriculture, publishing, and finance. So he's out there. And basically, he and his team have led two of his companies to become some of the America's fastest growing and privately owned organizations for eight years in a row. So this guy, he's done a lot. But he also talks in this episode about his first book, The Art of Why, but more importantly, his latest book, which expanded sort of the rule-defying breaking why. And he talks about what that is about breaking why and how we have to break our why in order to build it back up and get clearer on the next level of our why. We have an interesting conversation that kind of starts around some research that I've been doing and some work around sort of the essence that as human beings, that we have this need for control. And how does that come back to us, helping us to find our why? So listen up. This is me and Frankie having a discussion about breaking why. So Frankie, welcome to the show. All right. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So we're going to do something different today. I've been thinking a lot about the whole idea of how we're driven, right? You talk about drive, you talk about breaking the why, but I've been sort of unpacking the idea that we're all control freaks. Are you control freak? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. In my own way, I am. I mean, I've done a lot of work around that. It's ironic that you mentioned that. Well, actually, I think the reason that it doesn't probably doesn't seem new to you or anyone else is I think that we all are. It's actually woven into our makeup, our desire and need for control. Yeah. A hundred percent. How would you see, like with your experience, why would you say that about you? Like tell yeah, us so, your control journey and then we'll explore how that might have to do with breaking why. Yeah. So the interesting thing about control is that it's tied to my relationship with the things that I'm powerless over. Mm-hmm. And so my first experience with realizing that I did not have control was when I tried to control drinking and doing drugs 14 years ago and failed. So that was the beginning of my journey with even really looking, I never thought of myself as a control freak. Okay. And I still don't think of myself as a control freak, but when you peel back all the layers, we all are a little bit of a control freak in our own way. Some are a little more obvious. Right. Yeah. I want to ask you a question though, about what you said, because I don't want to get it too far because there's something in that. You said you tried to control drugs and alcohol, or did you use drugs and alcohol to control something else that you felt powerless over? I didn't use drugs and alcohol to control anything. I did them to escape the true things that I'm powerless over, which is not drugs and alcohol alone. I mean, I am powerless over that. My ongoing struggle, now that I overcame the drugs and alcohol piece and whatnot, my ongoing struggle is related more to my powerless over people Mm -hmm. and others, which obviously all of us struggle a little bit with that. But yeah, so my powerless over others or situations or things that weren't going my way, the drugs and alcohol were medicine to cope with that. They were escape. They were an escape. So I wouldn't say I used them to control it. But then when that escape, the medicine, see, for me, drugs and alcohol was more of a solution than a problem. Right. Right. And it is for a lot of means to control. So when things are out of control or we feel like we can't control a person or a situation, it's unconscious. I'm not saying that we do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely unconscious because I'm thinking I'm more like getting out of control. So like I drink and drug to get out of control (laughs) more than in control. But yeah, like, no, it's all wrapped up together because usually, and this is interesting because what you're talking about is tied very closely to my whole philosophy on strategic emotions and how it relates to everything that we do, especially our purpose. And I've been exploring this idea 
that strategic emotions and emotional intelligence are very similar. We came up with the term strategic emotions when we were writing the book, my publisher and I, because my first book was just about purpose and breaking why is also a lot about purpose and how to fulfill that. But what we realized was that the real core of my story and my experience has been the relationship to emotions, good and bad, as it relates to fulfilling your purpose and not giving up, not flinching and taking it all the way to the end, if you will, of whatever the end looks like that you're starting with, right? So yeah, what it boils down to is acceptance of the things that I am powerless over and learning how to adapt or evolve, or adapt or accept, right? That's actually one of the steps in Breaking Why There's 10 Steps. And one of them is adapt or accept. And knowing when to do that and when not to do that is a huge part of long-term authentic success. Yeah, I think I talk a lot about acceptance as well, because that's the thing Mm -hmm. when we try to control something that we can't, right? We're in resistance. We're not accepting. And then we exhaust ourselves in that struggle for control. So acceptance is absolutely important to see things for really what they are and where they are. And I think what you said triggers something for me. Like, so is accept and adapt one stage or both? Because I would see we have to accept so that we can be flexible and adapt, but you can't adapt until you accept. Yes or no? Yes. If you break it apart that way. So yeah, it's one step in the book, but the thing is that we've already accepted in step one, right? So step one is, why are you here? That's where we work out. What's my mission like with my business or my personal life or both in many cases, really both. What's my total mission, right? And so I have to accept that like where I'm at is not good enough. And so that I want to evolve. So yeah, early on in the process of breaking our why, we're going to go through an acceptance and adapting journey the second half of the 10 steps and step seven is accept and adapt, right? Or accept or adapt. But either way, it's you're going to be doing both every day. There's going to be certain things that I accept. There's certain things that I've got to adapt to. And knowing the difference is where like all of our experiences, the wisdom comes from. And that's where like mentorship and the team is so important Mm -hmm. and doing things like we're doing here today to continue to look at like, because there's some things that are unacceptable that we should not accept. A lot of times, if we hold on to too many of those things, we break. Even though it's breaking why, the idea is that I'm going to break my why before it breaks me. And that's what a lot of this comes from. Yeah, the whole Tell me more about that. I don't understand. Break my why before it breaks me. Does that mean yeah. the next why? Because maybe at maybe each it's of more, our life, you break, we might have you, different... Yeah, think of breaking as like hacking and rebuilding, right? So we're going to break it down to rebuild it. We're going to continue to experiment with it. So that's more of the breaking. So like if you're breaking something by design or on purpose in order to make it better, Hmm. right? So just like you think about technology, you think about us as humans, if I'm doing these disciplines that kind of like in a safe space, practice breaking myself or testing myself, if you will, then I'm able to hack different situations, life hacks, whatever you want to call it, and then rebuild stronger. So if not, my life will break because I'm holding on too closely or I'm not looking at these things. And that's what happened to me. My life broke 14 years ago because I was trying to chase money and I was not willing to like really take a serious look at my drug and alcohol use. And that was a bottom for me. And then I broke again in 2017 after putting out my first book. And it was more of an emotional bottom than like some sort of a substance bottom. And that's where Breaking Why came from because I wasn't even really following my own advice enough to not break. And my breaking point came in the way of a divorce, broken families and different things. And those things were ended up being a positive thing because I was able to step into some things, but it was very difficult. And I think that I don't have to repeat some of that if I continue to do my own breaking in a safe way and challenging and testing so that it doesn't break me. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm trying to break it down for our listeners as well, right? (laughs) Not to overuse the whole breaking thing. No, it's fine. Um, (laughs) So I like how you said first it was a drug and alcohol kind of breaking, and then it was an emotional break, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got more purposeful about challenging and breaking it yourself versus it's happening for you. So are you diving deeper? Each time you break it is another level of depth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the 10 steps, they're not some sort of a checklist or ladder. They're a circle, right? Because life is a circle. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going back around every time. So Every time I go through the steps, which I do once a year, it's one of those things where I'm able to revisit like and re-adapt my why, right? My why continues to get tighter and tighter and stronger. It went from like having really no why 
when I got sober to having some why outside of my business in recovery and helping other people. So a big thing that happened for me is I started the way I've been able to stay sober for 14 years is that I spend quite a bit of time and energy helping other people get sober. Mm. So that was like the first like, okay, actually, that was the second time I saw purpose modeled in a way that would be really, really good for my life, even though I'm helping other people. The first one actually was when I was a kid, my parents ran homeless shelters. So this idea of like helping the people that are truly poor and need and not getting a lot in return and living in that with them and walking them through it and having a deeper sense of purpose from that. I saw that as a child, but I couldn't marry the two as an adult because I wasn't willing to live in poverty like my parents were. And so I needed to do something different. So I, of course, I did what a lot of people do when they don't have money, when they're young, chase that and make right. a bunch of money and just say, I'm never going to be poor. So I tried that and that broke me because right. that was all I was chasing. And a lot of people, I think that that's, they make that mistake. They're chasing after these metrics, these KPIs, these money as a well, sense of like success. Yeah. Let me jump in because yeah, I like jump that. In. Sure. When we chase money, right, that can break us. When we chase anything, I think it can break us, right? A lot of people chase happiness, right? right? So they chase these or balance. They chase balance. What is that? What are these things? They're feelings. They're not going to fill that. They're byproducts. They're byproducts. Yes, I say that. They're things that happen. Yes, that's because that's the truth. And they chase productivity. They're all byproducts. I love it. I say the same thing. I love it. Listen, it's the same thing with like, I wanted to stop drinking and doing drugs. Once I realized I was powerless, and some people are, there's a lot of people that are powerless over it. Okay. And the ones that succeed in stopping are the ones that are willing to admit 100% to themselves that they're powerless, right? So once I did that, that was what made the difference. But just knowing that wasn't going to do it. Just because I know I'm powerless doesn't make me stop drinking or doing drugs. See, the irony of it is that by trying to stop drinking and just trying to stop doing drugs on my own power or my own willpower, like everybody thinks, oh, you just need more willpower. No, if I'm just focused on stopping doing something, I'm going to fail every time. But if I focus on doing something over here that's different and that gives me purpose, I don't care as much about this thing over here. And all of a sudden, that gets smaller. But as long as I'm focused on this, I'm just going to stop doing this. That's not a solution. Doing something different that I can put my energy into, that is a solution. And what I found was that doing thing was had to be purpose. It had to be focused on helping others and not greater than ourselves. Yeah, it has to be greater than ourselves. I think that's the key is when we see and can connect with that, that's where all those other things happen. That's where happiness happens. That's where we found balance. You know, because from that, yeah, you get free from some of this chaos, this insanity. You get free from having to be dependent on a substance like drugs, alcohol, or sex, or gambling, or or food, or whatever your shtick is. And then as a result, you are more free. You do have more peace. And it's because of practical things, because there's just less chaos in your life. You're going to be peaceful if there's less chaos in your life. Because you, know, you let a lot of stuff go that doesn't matter. When you're focused on a higher purpose, yeah, you really yeah. are clear, very clear what matters most. Yeah. You let go of the other stuff. I forget the expression about it's all small stuff. Yeah, I you're don't know right. either, but I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> I try not to misquote, but I will if I try. So <laughs> I don't do quotes unless they're written in front of me. So let me ask you a question, because some people feel in this idea of that, anything that you chase might break you. What about people who are chasing purpose? There's a lot of people who are like, I want to find that thing in my life and they chase purpose. And Uh what about that? Maybe that breaks them in a bad way. It could. So here's the thing. So the most important part of all this is honesty. I've got to be honest with myself. A lot of what's even in the book I wrote is about how to just really check in with myself and ask myself some difficult questions and stay honest and authentic. Okay. I want to live wholeheartedly. I want to live authentically. And I know those words are like a little more buzzy lately. Thanks to Brene Brown and everybody, but they're good words and they mean something. What they mean is that who I am at work, who I am on this podcast, who I am behind closed doors, who I am with my kids, who I am with my wife, who I am with the poker buddies. That's all the same person. And that's not an easy thing to pull off. It takes a lot of willingness to be honest. Okay. But once I am, then that's the first step. So if let's say, like you said, I'm super passionate about being purposeful, right? And that's my thing. And so where could that go wrong? Well, it could go wrong because like, maybe I'm so obsessed with it that my family's not able to eat because I'm not making any money. Mm -hmm. Or I don't get to see my family because I'm so obsessed with this purpose. So that's where I have to be honest with this. I either have to 
decide that it's not important for me to have family, or I've got to figure out a way to do those things realistically. But that requires communication. It requires honesty on my part and the other people's part that I'm in a relationship with. So yeah, you have to keep checking in. That's where I think people think this is just like one linear journey that like once I figure out my purpose and once I have that first hit, like, oh, we're good now. But like, that's not how it works. I've got to keep checking in. I've got to keep practicing these principles of, am I supposed to accept this in the, this moment or am I supposed to adapt and lean in? And that's where we don't have to do it alone. That's my big thing with the School of Wise. I want it to be a community that's free, that people can have support in that type of journey. So what happens like people who, like you said, check in with yourself and be honest, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I really want something. It's really important to me. And I feel like it's my purpose. How do you be honest with yourself? What if it's really someone else's goal for you? You know what I mean? How very often we adopt from a young age that this or is what dad somebody or mom wants, wants. for yep. us, yep. right? And we, and we take it on this and we think big. that it's ours, but it's not mm -hmm. ours. How do we know? How do we really get honest with ourselves if it's unconscious? Well, for one, I always say that my brain or my mind is a neighborhood that you don't want to really want to wander into alone. So one, I think you should not do it alone. I mean, one of the steps early on, if you're going to do this deal, like you're ready to start something great or get something that was great unstuck and make it great again, whatever it is that you're trying to do, you should not do it alone. And the key is that you don't need a huge team, but you do need a team of people that have what you want, right? And what so you, mean, you can like learn a coach, from coach, like yeah, mentor peers that have what you want. What if it's not what partners. you want? Like, come, let's come back to it that. It doesn't have to be, when I say what you want, that doesn't mean like, oh, I want a car. I mean, like they have these byproducts that I want. Like maybe the byproduct is, is that I want to feel fulfilled or me have a meaningful life. Or my byproduct is that I want to feel like I've got, I'm not always running around and I'm at peace. Like these byproducts, we talked about happiness, freedom, but okay. Right. They seem to have that. And it's like, okay, how do they get that? And learning from that. I have to be learning from other people because that's how I'm going to learn myself. So I've got to be talking with other people, okay? And I've also got to be writing. So a lot of like the steps in the book are they're writing, they're inventories, mm -hmm. right? So the idea is that I'm writing so that I can see it, mm -hmm. right? And so that I can understand it. And then I'm talking with other people. So, and then over time, I'm able to see myself and other people. They're able to see themselves in me. Again, like the bottom line is that I've got to get to a point where I'm okay with being true to myself and letting others down. Like that's a big part of the journey. That was a, my breaking point in 2017. I had to be okay with walking away from a marriage with three children and knowing that I was going to let maybe hundreds of people down that were looking up to me as like a standard of what it should be. You know, married 15 right. years, right. three kids, got the book, successful, right. Inc. 500, blah, blah, blah. Like I was the poster child. Right. And it was a pedestal and it was a golden pedestal. And it wasn't until I was willing to burn the pedestal to the ground and then be on the ground with others and be okay with what you think of me and be okay with what other people think of me because I was had to go into the a deeper level, deeper journey to be okay with me, to be enough without having to do all this stuff. That's a huge part of this. It's not an easy journey. It's not for the faint of heart. But once I was willing to let those people down that I thought I needed to be a certain way for, that was a huge step in my journey of getting honest with myself and honest with like, why am I here? Which is step one. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's how it was for me. I guess to put it in my words, right? So also people who are listening, what are the words that come to you, right? Think about that. Mm -hmm. But like, as you said, write it down, talk to people because you learn more about yourself yeah. when the expressions I use is make the unconscious conscious. Because yeah. it's a lot going on that's unconsciously. Right that we need to bring to the surface. And we only actually realize what that is when we have those conversations, when people ask exactly. us questions. That's why I said coach, community, but- Yeah, coach, you know, writing, therapist. Like, all absolutely. of those, all of right. those. That help coach, us. therapist, sponsor, peers, partners, friends, like- Right. But pick your circle wisely and make sure that they have what you want. I talk about this a lot in the book. Does that person have what I want in 20 years? Right. And so for the audience, I want to make something clear. So like for the example, I said that maybe somebody else has set your, what you wanted. So let's say somebody says, I want to be a doctor and they think they want to be a doctor and they do want to make a difference in the world. I think in our hearts, we all want to make a difference in the yeah, world. Yeah. And so they want to make a difference and their, their family, everybody's been a doctor. The grandmother was a doctor. The grandfather was a doctor. The great, great grandfather was a doctor. So like, it's in a whole line of doctors. So mm -hmm. of course I'm going to be a doctor. Right. And somewhere it's not fulfilling you. It's not making you happy. 
Yeah. You want to make a difference and you think that's the only way. So what I'm hearing you say, just to put it so that everybody listening can understand how it might relate to them in that kind of circumstance. Sure. That what you're saying is, is as you go on this discovery process of what is it that doesn't feel comfortable, your community might not be a group of doctors, right? So no, just, gonna, just so that that's, that's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you realize that you don't want to be a doctor, you're not going to have a doctor as a mentor. But you may not realize that yet. Well, no, you may not. But my experience that life actually happens is one day at a time. Like it reveals itself as it's yes. in time. But if I'm not paying attention because I'm living unconsciously, as you say, that's where I got. I mean, I wasn't doing anything bad when my why was broke. It was I was just doing what everybody does and like working and busy and just not not having a process for like the checking in and like whatnot. And I had some of that. But and everybody's journey is different, right? Yeah. Nobody's journey is going to be exactly the same. But the important part is that I'm at least asking these questions and I'm looking at it. And if I ask these questions, eventually it's going to become strong enough inside of me for me to stand up and do something different. And that's when I should not accept and I should adapt, mm -hmm. right? Because if I keep doing the same things, expecting different results, that's not adapting, right? That's well, I think somebody said it was definitely yeah. Anyway. Yeah, well, it is. And so if nothing changes, nothing changes. That whole concept is that yeah. like, but knowing, okay, what do I change? And again, that's where it's like, okay, you're going to change who your circles are and who your teams are over different seasons. Right. So just do with the best information you have, make a start, just yeah. make a start somewhere. And if you get it wrong, that's part of the process. That's where it's like, if I'm paying attention and I'm getting it wrong, that's what breaking why is. It's about seeing the little breaks you know, and seeing these things happen and then adjusting to that. That's all you can do. What else really can you do? Make it a game, right? You're just getting to the next level. And sometimes when you're fighting the bad guys or whatever you're doing to get to that level, you make a mistake, you make a misstep, you die, your character comes alive again and you get that chance to... Uh, yeah, exa exactly. So. That's exactly the same thing. And in a game, you're focused, right? So and you love focus. So in a game, you're super focused. So obviously, if I just fell in that pit because I tried to jump off this wall or shoot this cannon or something or whatever right. game you're in, you're going to remember that because you have one track mind and that's to beat the next level. That's right. Right. That's the difference between the game and life. Life isn't the same thing because life, not everything in life is a competition, right? Thank God. It doesn't have to make it a competition, but you are looking, I think we're all looking to get to the next level of ourselves, the next level of emotional intelligence, the yes. next level of quality relationships. So that, that's how I'm relating it to the game is not yeah, in of the course. competition side, but in being our best self. And if we know one thing doesn't work, like you said, firing against that wall and then falling into the pit, then you then you try a different approach, right? That's your adapting. Yeah. And where do I want to be in the end? 70, 80 years old. Like I have to keep trying, even though I'm not 70 or 80 years old, I'm 40 years old. So I have to force myself sometimes to think like that so that I don't just give into today's impulse, right? Or today's compulsion that I want to do that's going to make me feel more powerful. Right. Mm -hmm. That's going back to your control. Going back to the, I was going to yeah. bring you back to that. So that's, here we go. So, yeah. So expand upon that because I want to wrap up with that. Yeah. So, so with the control freak deal is that like at the end of the day, there's going to be times where I feel like I'm out of control. The whole reason why I want to control things is, is because I feel like I'm out of control. So mm -hmm. when I feel like I'm in control, I actually don't need to control as much. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'd end up in it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So whenever I'm not out of control. I don't feel like I need control. So I don't end up doing things that are controlling to other people and then being frustrated and resentful that it failed and then afraid of what's going to happen if it doesn't come through. Again, it's this wild cycle, self-fulfilling prophecy all intertwined. But at the end of the day, that's where the acceptance piece is so big when it comes to other people. What I can change versus what other people can change, that's really the key, right? I'm powerless over you right, Penny, I can't make you do anything. I might be able to influence you. And I think that's where a lot of us get a little, I know I got real sidetracked with that. I was so good at getting people excited or motivated or moving in a direction that I thought I could control people. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's called manipulation. And that's not something that is a tool you want to try to use because it doesn't work long term and right. it always ends in flames. But we've all been there, right? That's a misconception. Now, what I can change is if I decide that I want to be, I want to hang out with you or not hang out with you. I can change the way that I react to you. I can change the way that I think about you. I have to constantly be going back to like these situations that emotionally stir me up and look at that, right? Because usually when I go in for the control, there's some sort of an emotion happening, even if it's subconscious, that's trying to regain like some sort of a innate, natural 
defense mechanism Mm -hmm. that we have. That's why it's it's not bad that we try to control it. It's a defense mechanism that our body is probably trying to respond to. And I'm not a scientist, so I don't know exactly if it's the body. So don't misquote me there. But something's going on that is unique. I mean, it's not unique. It's the opposite of unique. All of us have the same thing. So there's something kind of built into it. I think it comes back to the emotional aspect. But anyway, I know that people's attention spans do not go much right. past where we are now. I think that we've given them some food for thought. You can always come back to the conversation another time. So where do people find more about you and Breaking Why and your other resources? Yeah, no problem. So I'm on all major social medias. The book is at all the major bookstores, but Amazon's usually the easiest. I, mean, I think it's the best price. And then I have frankie-russo.com, which has links to everything and my School of Why podcast. So Yeah, this was great. I love being on your show. Thank you so much for having me. I was excited to have you on the other day. Yeah, it's fun to take the different perspectives together. Yeah, it's a completely different chat, which is awesome. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Hey, my pleasure. Look forward to seeing you soon, Penny. Likewise. So thank you all for being here and talking and listening to understand about what's going on with our need for control and how when we get really honest with ourselves and we look outside of ourselves, then we're going to find a greater purpose. And that purpose is going to, at different stages of our life, it's going to break down and build back up into understanding the next level of where it is that we want to go and why we want to go there. And really that getting honest with ourselves and checking in is so important to help us to live purposely. That means we have to live consciously. We have to take what's going on in our unconscious and get real, bring it into our consciousness and be able to accept our, some of our faults, some of our inability to be everything to everyone. And when we accept that and recognize that and be true to ourselves, we're going to have an easier path to finding our why and creating more impact in this life. So thank you for being here. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time. <laughs>